I grew up in the southwest coast of Ireland in a county called Kerry. Our farm went right down to the seashore. We were always sailing on or in the water and, you know, connection with the sea was just inherent. I think I was just very lucky to be of a generation where the sport of sailing was just coming of age. Here we are today, quite a few years later. I've completed 11 round the world races and seven ocean races. My core role within the team is I'm the Sustainability Programme Director. 11th Hour Racing is really about promoting sustainability and creating change within marine communities. How can we use our work, our influence, our presence to leave a legacy and to try to change things for the better? And so this is the core role um, that I have. Walk the walk uh, and then share the story. So which is really to embed sustainability through everything we do, share that and create collaborative opportunities with our suppliers and partners. As athletes, as sailors, as eco-athletes, citizen scientists, we feel like it's our responsibility to contribute back to the scientific community. These drifter buoys record sea surface temperature, atmospheric pressure, and they help detect current, set, and drift in uh, pretty remote parts of the world. And actually, that goes back into climatological models that we use on board. Well, the connection we have with the water as an athlete, whether you're a surfer, or kiteboarder, or sailor, is really this unique opportunity to experience and be in nature in a way which, unfortunately, most people don't get. It's an opportunity, it's a privilege, but it's also a responsibility. You know, we're all ocean citizens, whether we live on the ocean's edge or in the middle of a continent, every second breath we get comes from the ocean and everything you know, that ends up in our streams and rivers ends up in the ocean. We're all ocean citizens at the end of the day. Our core mission, really, as a team, is to create change within the marine industry. And so for us, it was first of all about measuring uh, where our impacts are and understanding where the key ones are. Uh, one of the most important ones is as we built the boat itself. So we did a full life cycle assessment on the boat uh, and that created a new benchmark for the class and for ocean racing as a whole. So that was really important. Mocas will be doing an LCA on their future bills, so that was really a key thing and a good example of the type of influence that we're trying to have. And then of course other impacts, flying people and shipping equipment around the world, so I'm talking here about measuring the actual operational footprint of a global sports team. So think about a football team or Olympic athletes as they fly from one event to the other. These are the operational footprints that we need to take into account. We found it quite unsatisfactory, rather unambitious by some of these international standards until we met sea trees. What we want to try to do is to basically sequester 20% more carbon than we have emitted. Uh, we have a very clear strategy for our carbon accounting. You know, look for verified and certified solutions when they exist. We really wanted to focus on blue carbon, the ocean carbon. And again, this is a perfect match with our partnership with sea trees. How are we addressing marine mammal issues uh, at sea? How are we looking at our plastic footprint? You know, what's the gender balance on the team? All of these broad sustainability issues, we're trying to now look at them through a net positive lens. How can we leave a legacy through everything we do? Whether you're at home or in a big business, we are purchasing and buying products and services and at the end of the day, we're voting with our dollar. Sustainable sourcing, asking those questions, where is this coming from, who made it, have you got an end of life plan, what's the packaging, all of these important questions. And when we look at this in the carbon space, uh, we're thinking about ocean positive and this is a perfect match with sea trees. How can we draw down more carbon than we emit as part of this you know, blue carbon strategy? The 
Ocean Race is the longest event in any sport from start to finish. It's six months this time. Also in mileage, uh, about 45,000 miles around the world. This creates this amazing platform for us to not only showcase sport and ocean sport, more than 80% of the public generally follow some kind of sport, but very few people follow science. And so what we're doing is marrying both of these together to tell a much, much more important message. People know something has to happen. Uh, what people are missing is really the tools or even the knowledge of where to start. Here at Ocean Life Park, at every stopover, we have the One Blue Voice experience where people who come to visit us can enjoy a 10-minute interactive moment where they learn why the ocean is so important and what we can do to help. And what we're aiming for is to gain 50,000 signatures for our One Blue Voice campaign, which we'll present to the United Nations General Assembly in September of 2023. At the end of the day, each one of us has a role in this wider solution. I think we all understand that the world is not in a great place. So doing less bad is really not good enough. Leadership means that we, we turn up and we stop talking and we act.